Hello, I'm Charlotte Davenport. I'm happily at the King Farm today with Rachel and Macy from Woodstock Community TV. They've recently done a wonderful couple of uh, videos about Sculpture Fest 2019, which this is part of. And I hope you'll go onto their site and hear more. So thank you for having me here, both of you. We're going to be talking with people here at the uh, King Farm, some artists and viewing what's going on on this place right now, which will be open to the public and fully set up by Saturday, August 24th. People are welcome at all times, like right now, anytime. This is a park where you can come anytime you like. It connects to the trails on the National Park. You see school kids running here. You watch people come here to picnic. And it's basically a place you can come and enjoy yourself. And it's wonderful if you don't happen to have fields and hills and views to come here and sit and just appreciate it. A lot of work has been done to make this place a viable situation like this. And we're so grateful to the Vermont Land Trust, which it manages and maintains this property. We'll speak with some from someone from that organization, along with um, at least three artists. Our first guest today will be Jay Mead. He's been curating shows with us at the King Farm now for several years. And he's an artist who shows at Sculpture Fest on Prosper Road and in many other places that we're not running. Um, very valuable part of our community and especially valuable to the King Farm. He helped uh, secure some of the buildings with my husband Peter in the beginning so that we could get inside them to do installations. And it's an endless task and it's all been done with great enthusiasm. I'm so glad you're here. Well, Charlotte, it's really great to be here. Um, I remember when you first invited me, uh, you said, there's a great thing happening up at King Farm. And I was like, well, what is that? And she said, it's this, you said, it's this place up there next door. And, you know, it took me a while because I was showing at Sculpture Fest and um, first of all, I want to just acknowledge that you, Charlotte, have brought a very important thing to our area. You've created this venue for contemporary work to happen, and it's open all the time, free to the public. Um, and then the ma most amazing thing, and this is why I love working with you, is that artists get to cite their work. And that means you think about the location, and you put the work in that location, and it works. And you talk to Charlotte and Peter, and it happens and it's very easy and I, I love that about working with you you people so um, when I came up here finally to look at this I was like this place is incredible this is an amazing historic space but it has the great potential of this really a, a different type of topography than you're at, at, at Sculpture Fest so it also has these beautiful old buildings and there's uh, there's the potential of of integrating art with buildings and landscape. So initially when I was first here, I thought this is, this is just an incredible opportunity for experimentation. And so um, the first show I did here when Charlotte asked me to be a curator was I did a show called Grounding. And it was about connecting with the earth and place. And, but then I decided that really what this is all about is about a lab. It's an art lab. It's a place to experiment and try things out. And so I decided that it should be called Land Art Lab. And so we just name it after each year. We've had Land Art Lab 17, 18, 19. So there's been three years of it running. Um, it's, uh, you know, we're here uh, on this land. It's beautiful. And, and there are things that happen in and around the buildings. And, um, and, and you know, we, you can do things here that, uh, a lot of times you can't do almost anywhere else. So, and, and it's also always open. That's a fantastic thing. People come on hikes, they picnic here. School, school groups come up here. 
Uh, I think it's just a fantastic opportunity for the community. Um, I've had big pieces here that I've been able to do that I couldn't do anywhere else. I had a big piece on that hillside behind me that was there for five years. It was called When the Moon Came to Earth. Um, so that was all on saplings. I, I experiment. I, when I think about working here, I think about working in a way I haven't worked before. So that's what I'm trying to do. And, and uh, we invite all of the artists who come here, they're, 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 they're coming with that spirit. Um, so um, it's really exciting. Well, and it truly is having an impact on the artists at Sculpture Fest as well. I, I see people getting braver, daring to do things kind of out of the more classical situation or contemporary. It's breaking ground for both of us. People that are, I think I have four or five people who are in both shows right now or at the History Center. And it's becoming a regional presence. What I've noticed is that regional art is about the land. It's about work. It's about what people do in their jobs and how well they do those jobs. And then how that turns into art for some or the other way around. Artists have to find work. I have one of my artists is teaching welding, but she's also doing beautiful work here, Sabrina Fadiel. Many, many people. Chris Miller, who's an artist who does memorials and then creates out of his own joy and presence something that goes on the land and so I'm just feeling really happy about this place and I'm so glad you've been here because I've been transformed by you quite a bit too um, so thank you Jay well thank you Charlotte um, I, I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I'm surprised when you say you know that you you've learned a lot from me because I feel like you have uh, you know you created this venue and you've you know, you have you have networked and made this happen in the community. So, um, thank you for. What I want to add, I'm just saying. People keep saying you, meaning me. My husband Peter Davenport is he is the person who shapes the land, who clears it up, who cleared the pond, who helped with you resurrect one of these buildings, and so the work part is done by these other people around me, and I'm really grateful to that too, and to the Peter's love of this place. And I just want to dovetail a little bit off of that. I think you bring up this great thing, which is about we just get it done. It's so much of the way that we work in Vermont, right? I it's, agree. It's, it's like we don't have to go through a committee. We're like, we, I just go, if I want to do something, I check in with Peter, I check in with Charlotte, and Peter more likely will say, okay, I'll bring the tractor over and let's put an auger on it and drill a hole or move a rock or something. Mm -hmm. But I do remember I saw all the barbed wire that Peter pulled out and all the metal and so many things to bring this old farm back into a place which could be a more friendly place to the public. So I really appreciate that hard work that you guys have done for a long time here. And volunteers all around us. Yeah. Um, thanks Charlotte for inviting me. I've really enjoyed being part of this project. We'll also be speaking with Carla Kimball, who has an installation that's partially funded by the Burns Foundation, and also the grant went through Pentangle Arts. So the community is beginning to support this place in a wonderful way. We're just thrilled that she's here. Her work often travels. She's also a dancer. I know that they did something at the Hall Foundation once, and they've done something at the Black Center at Dartmouth. So it's a small installation, it's a little hard to find. We'll have signage, so you'll find it. It's tucked under one of the buildings. I think this is the third or fourth time you've been here. It's the second time. The second, the second time. time, yeah. I've seen you in other places, yeah. and I'm remembering your wonderful piece at um, Dartmouth. Oh yes, thank you, thank you. Please tell us what you're up to. So I'll give you a little background about how I came to this current piece that I'm, I'm installing. Um, I did the, uh, in, I think it was in 2016, 2016 when I did a, a installation here in the cabin. And the, the real issue for me is as a photographer, how do I do sculpture? 
right? It's, it, it's like you, it, you think with something very physical with sculpture. And so when I came here to, uh, and was invited by both Jay Mead and Charlotte to, to participate, it was like, what do I do? How do I do this? Uh, so in um, the installation that I did, uh, I basically found a red chair on the property and decided I was going to feature the red chair. And so I went all around the property, took pictures, and then the, the question was, how do I make it more sculptural? And I decided to, to uh, print on fabric, which is not the typical pho photographic uh, treatment. And print on fabric and then also cut this, uh, most of the, at least two of the uh, uh, pieces into strips. Because the cabin is open, the windows are broken, there's sunlight coming through, there's air going through, uh, the pieces could then dance. In, in the uh, in, in the wind, and uh, I was I was really pleased with how that turned out. Um, the result of that was I am also a dancer, and my choreographer Marie Foucault. I brought her here. She thought that me cutting photographs into strips was kind of a sacrilege. <laughs> you don't cut photographs into strips, so she wanted to come and see what I'd done. And she started moving around with these pieces. As a result of all that, we brought our, uh, our dan the dancers from the class that I take with her, we brought out to uh, the, uh, out here. We did a bunch of movement. We took the red chair around in different places. We tried some things out. We did a bunch of videotape, actually. Uh, and that group then began, the red chair began to travel from here to other places, we, me taking that group out to places in the woods, most, most particularly over in Wallingford, uh, where uh, there's some woods that I know very well. Out of that came a process where we did a whole series with the red chair, but then one day I took, I took the group out into the woods, and instead of the red chair, we had a red umbrella. Mm -hmm. and, and so the piece that I'm hung here was is featuring that red umbrella with the dancers. And you'll see if when you look at the piece, you'll see the dancers. And I call them dancers, but they're not really dancers. We're kind of movers. We're, we're, uh, we're, we haven't found yet a way to, to describe what we do because it's not really dance. It's not pirouettes and that sort of thing. It's much more pedestrian movement that we do. So in this piece here, you'll see five dancers or five movers who are hanging out in different ways behind trees. I wanted to put it underneath the barn there because I wanted it to be something that people kind of came upon without knowing it and that it's a bit mysterious. It's like, what's happening in here? Uh, I also wanted to print on very, again on fabric, uh, which, which I found is very uh, weather um, it doesn't seem to be bothered by the weather. <laughs> um, so I wanted to print on the same fabric and I wanted to print four foot uh, panels. I have seven panels that are four feet and I wanted them to be able to move again with the, with the elements. Uh, in order to do that, it was going to cost me a fair amount of money. So one of the things I said to you all at the beginning was I need to get funding to be able to, to put this piece together. And I was able to get funding, and, and I'm so grateful to the Jack and Dorothy Byrne Foundation. Yes, that's because, so good. Because they gave me funding for this piece. And also the... Did you go through Pentangle to get that, yeah. as I suggested? Yeah, good. so Pen I'm, uh, Pen Pentangle is the other uh, organization that really gave me support for this. And they made it possible, because I really wouldn't have done it if I didn't have, That's wonderful. have that support. Yeah. And one last thing I will say is that the pieces that I, I created back in 2016, one of them I have hanging, one of the ones with the strips, mm -hmm. I have hanging on my shed. It's oh. been on my shed ever since it left really? here. Wonderful. It gets the, the morning sun, hot morning sun direct, and it's still looking good. So these fabric pieces are pretty amazing, and I'm noticing that's incredible. That right now we're, we're mid morning now, yes. and I'm noticing that it is uh, getting the morning sun. 
and I'm not at all worried about the quality of the, of the photograph. Could you explain just a little bit about how this process works? Do you conduct it? Do you, or do you, are there fabricators who say, we'll do it? How do, how is Which process? The, the process of getting the image on the fabric. I uh, basically, I use R.C. Brayshaw. They're in, they're in West Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And they, um, I send them, I, 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 I basically send them the panels in, in photograph in uh, a form that they can then transfer yes. onto the fabric. These fabrics are often used for, pa uh, um, like I, w I just went by Northern Stage and they're putting yeah. up a new, a new uh, big uh, uh, flyer, big, uh, what do you call oh, them? Oh, I see. Yeah. So they use them for for, for their, advertising for the advertising and things like that. And probably on sets, I would imagine too. Maybe I don't know about the, uh, it, it, because these are weatherproof. This is the thing about this fabric oh, is it's true. weatherproof. It's more expensive than yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were so glad it's here. Thank you. And I I'm hope everybody to have will, it. will find their way to this a bit hidden spot on the property. We'll have a little sign with Carla's name on it, directing you off the main path to the right building. Yeah. And, and underneath you'll have this lovely surprise. Right, it's intended to be this is mysterious, delightful encounter with something that you're trying to figure out what's happening when you look at it. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're delighted you're that you're here Charlotte. again. I'm, I'm so you. pleased to be here again. We also met with Ken Woodhead. Many people in Woodstock community know Ken. He has had many wonderful roles, including um, having done the little uh, rocking horse bench at the children's, looking out the children's window from the Norman Williams Library. Ken has been in this show in the past, but not recently, and for years was a regular over at um, Sculpture Fest across the way on Prosper Road. This year he's been working with two friends on an incredible piece. Can you tell me the title and then uh, end it? It is, the title is uh, Stacked Cordwood. It is for sale for a hundred dollars, actually half a cord and uh, it can be bought here and taken home and used for firewood. Not deliverable. Right, we do <laughs> not deliver though. Thank you. This piece is really an astounding landmark now, already on the corner of, Press, uh, of the Sculpture Press property. I would like to know more about the beginnings of this interest, not just in Wood, and I love the name being Ken Woodhead, so our destinies sometimes are worked out for us. Yeah, well, um, I suppose that uh, what you do in life, you have a, all, you have a routine. And, and it's, uh, if, if you can make a gap in, in your life of two months and do something totally different. So the, one of my first ones was the spiral. It took me six weeks and I spent the whole time just doing that. So the idea of the stack wood is just that uh, it's available and, and it can be fire, fire wood and you can make a shape or you can make a, an, an arch. Uh, so this, this thing that we put together or working on is eight foot wide 
uh, that way and it's supposed to be 12 foot uh, tall made out of small pieces of 10 and a half inch pieces of wood that are round and that is the beauty it's the stacked wood of round holes and the spaces and it's square or rectangular which presumably looks odd in nature how did you find your helpers huh? how did you find your helpers well I met I know him from the UU and uh, and I asked him to, if we share this idea and he seemed to uh, he seemed to want to do that and then I've got Craig Bridge helping me a bit and the other man is Wayne Thompson. Uh, so this is my friend Wayne, and he uh, is, is showing a great deal of enthusiasm for this and helping me, and I'm helping him. Ken and I, we know each other's work. Uh, we have a lot of respect for what each other has done. Um, I'm often working on small pieces in my own studio, so it's a pleasure to the outside and working on a large piece. Yeah. Yeah, he said maybe 12 feet, but it might be a touch more. Uh, it's very square, very plumb. Uh, Level. It's, it's plumb. amazing. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. We're having a great time. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing this finish. The nice thing about putting this at the bottom of the Sculpture Profess show on Prosper Road. It's a reminder to come to Land Art Lab, which is over here at the King Farm. And we're going to have signage there because lots of people come there and they don't remember to come over to this wonderful farm. And I'm so grateful yeah. that you took the time yeah. to do this. It's really, it's very, yeah. very helpful in terms of sharing all these um, different locations. Both of you, thank you. And great. And then we were lucky enough to see that um, we also have Donna Foster, who's been our good friend over here. She works for the land trust. She's our link. We keep in touch with her. She tells us when buildings shouldn't be used because they're going to have roofing done. She's just a very important part of our connection now to the King Farm. And I'd like you to explain what you do for the Land Trust. Well, uh, this is my office. <laughs> I get to come here a few days a week. Um, I'm a regional stewardship manager, so I go out and I visit owners of conserved lands, walk their property, see if they have any questions on their conservation easements. and hopefully provide some um, helpful resource assistance if they need it, get them in touch with organizations they need to, and just build that relationship, which is what I love to do. Well, you've been very helpful with us because Don is able to update us on situations here that, so that we know not to put an installation, for example, in a building that's going to be worked on. There's some roofing being done here presently. All these things are really welcome because one of the main purposes of being up here is so that people know the need. We need to raise some money, we need the Preservation Trust to support these places and so that the work that needs to be done can be done. And so when we were told, that, no, don't go near there this year, da da da, there was always a good reason. And we needed that kind of connection and now we have it and it's been very, very useful. Well, I'm glad. Keep in touch with us. And I'm we're becoming good neighbors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't live here, but she's a neighbor once in a while. And we love to have Sculpture Fest here on the King Farm. So it's, we like it's, that we yeah, do. It's a good fit. Thank you. Well, the King Farm has been the office for the Vermont Land Trust since 1986, originally Ottaquichi Land Trust. Um, I myself have been here for 19 years, getting to come to work on this beautiful property. Um, but we own it and we manage it. We have caretakers who live in the building and do some farming on the property. We have sculpture fests, we have the community gardens, um, we have some great things happening with the school which is nearby, uh, with BYCC, great relationship with our neighbors, the National Park. Um, it's, it's just a fantastic place for all kinds of 
things come together. And I don't know if you saw the piece on the um, pollinators. I know, I love that. I was telling Eastern. Macy about the monarchs up in the field. Yeah, the, the and pollinators. And forestry, too. Yeah. And it, they've had programs uh, getting rid of invasive species. Right. This has gone on for all the years we've been here. Yeah, we had an invasive plant species workshop back in May. So we had folks come here and learn on the land. We had a um, um, professional forester and also a couple of professional foresters who work closely with uh, combating invasive species. And then, um, then we take that when we're on our visits with landowners and we can suggest they work. Um, we visit landowners who have conservation easements um, every year or every other year. Yeah, there are two different, there are several different ways. Um, donations of conservation easements are also purchase easements. And then once conservation easement is on the land, it's forever, it's per, uh, for perpetuity. So we go out every year as part of uh, stewardship, building the relationship with that landowner and making sure they understand their conservation easement and providing resource information if they need it. There's a lot of Savvy landowners who who uh, spend a lot of time on their land and have a great relationship themselves with their land. Right, current use is a state program and, and um, re um, reduces property taxes for keeping your land in agriculture or forestry. A lot of conserved land is also in the current use program, very compatible programs. And if, without that, um, preserving a place is more than just buildings. There's so many complications and doing it properly within environmental reasoning and intelligence is so important. Yeah. And a lot of the things we learn here, we're able to take and uh, share with our landowners throughout the state, which is a very good, good fit. Yes, that's good. is that we have discovered over 33 years that art on the land is totally suitable to regional artists developing their skills, their ways of working together, creating work as a response, coming in to get ideas, sometimes coming in with ideas. We've also worked with people in the History Center shows and they're very different. Often they reflect the history of place. Right now, carvers and sculptors, that show is in response to the fact that we have this wonderful new goddess on top of the State House building. And so the skill of people who carve and sculpt, which has been here since really a mid-1800s, it's beginning to blend with more contemporary ideas, uh, work which is flexible, which will be gone by the end of the season, with work that is also very permanent. And I think it's a very special situation that's happening because of the response of people who want to be on the land. They want to walk on the land. They care about the land. And the work comes from the land, the wood, the stone, and the experiences, being on the water. Um, it's very playful, but it's also very serious. And there's some serious issues being addressed in this show, including Married Meijin's cockfight, which I think is a very important piece. There are pieces that reflect um, just something as simple as Hector's her earth, big words just saying earth, kind of sums it up. We've got the water, we have the sky, there's a, there's a flag with birds on it, um, and there were eagles above it on the day it was installed. So it's, it's a very sincere situation with artists. If you have any reason to bring a group or want some tour or some help, you can always email me at charlotte, C-H-A-R-L-E-T, Davenport, 01 at gmail. I'm happy to make arrangements. School buses have to let us know ahead. We like to have appointments for groups over 20 or 30 people, although you're always welcome. And sometimes I look up and there are groups like that, and they just do fine. So welcome to all the Sculpture Fest projects. I hope to see many of you here on the land at Land Art Lab, which is at the King Farm. There are two entrances. You can come in from King Farm Road. You can come in from Prosper Road. They're not 
really well marked, but they're, it's pretty clear. There'll be parking directions in both situations. School groups may be here when you come, and that just makes it even more fun. It's always available. People run here and hike here, and now they come to see the art as well. I hope to see you. And now finally, we're going to take a little walk, and we're going to go down towards the Prosper Brook Trail, look into the brook, and see what's going on. I heard some children, and I hope they're still there. <laughs>